People often ask me how to do well in the biology papers, and in particular the biology paper 2 section B. So that's what I'm going to go through today. Um, so what is the paper 2 section B? Well, it's composed of three different sections of the biology exam, um, and I'm going to take you through them individually. So the first one is the multiple choice question of paper 1. The second paper is the short and long answer questions, with the third paper being the option paper. One of the particular sections in paper 2 is the section B, and this contains long answer questions only. There are two groups of questions, uh, each group worth 20 marks. What do they look like? So this is a sample of a question sheet that I've taken from before, and you can see that there are two shorter questions as well as one longer question, in this case of it being worth 8 marks. Some common combinations of mark schemes include three different questions worth 4, 6 and 8 marks, 5, 5 and 8, as well as 4, 5 and 9. And just remember that there are two marks as well for structure, so keep it well structured. People say that these are really hard, and the best way to do them that I find is to approach it with a shotgun approach. What this means is that you have to write down a lot more points than there are worth marks. So in this particular diagram, you can probably see that there are lots of different shotgun pellets. These different pellets represent your points. Some of them will give you marks if they happen to fall on the target. Other ones won't give you marks. So say, for example, if there was an eight-point question, you want to write about 12 to 13. And this gives you room for error because four of those can not give you marks and you'll still be able to get the full marks, eight out of eight. So five different points that you can take into mind to do well in, the, in these section two paper B uh, points. So the first one is structure, and the best way to do it is by dot point form, not paragraph form. The reason why I know this is because the mark scheme itself has all the points listed in dot point form. So here's a good structure. Individual points are going down the screen and it's really easy for the marker to give you extra marks. This is bad structure. It's got exactly the same points as what we had before. However, it's all in an essay form or prose form. And just imagine the examiner. It just gets annoying reading this kind of structure. So two is to define key concepts. Um, and then let's look at question 6b in this particular example to so describe how pancreatic cells directly affect blood glucose levels. So what's a key concept in here? It's homeostasis. So let's define homeostasis. It's the maintenance of a body variable within normal limits. This will give you one mark. So just remember to define key concepts within the question. The third is to expand it from there. So you've defined it. Now what else can you talk about within the question? So looking at the same question about pancreatic cells affecting blood glucose levels, another question you might want to ask is, what does it release? So they release insulin. When does it do it? When the blood glucose level is high. And where do they act? So this particular hormone acts on muscle cells as well as the liver. And also why? So in this case, why does this reduce glucose levels? By causing the reuptake of glucose into muscle and liver cells, reducing blood glucose levels. So that's expanding. Remember to do that. Some people also like to draw a diagram too, and this is an alternative way to approach a question. So if we talk about question 6b, uh, we can look at the pancreas, which releases, uh, which releases insulin. And you can see here that I've drawn a diagram before, very rough diagram, and it allows muscle and liver to uptake the glucose, as well as, uh, and this causes glucose to be lowered finally leading to a uh, correction in the high amount of glucose. So you can see this is an alternative way to approach uh, the question and full marks will, will be given for any diagrams which have sufficient detail. The final point is to go through an example and let's look at a different question. We've talked about um, homeostasis and blood sugar levels enough. So another example might be outline the process of exocytosis. 
So you might talk a bit about exocytosis, about what it is, about, um, about how it releases contents outside the cell. And then every time that there's a process, just remember to give an example. So in this case, you could talk about acetylcholine being exocytosed during synaptic transmission. And that's another mark. So that means that you only have three marks left that you need to get. And remember to go about and try and get more marks, more points than are necessary. So I hope you found that useful. That's my approach to, uh, to talking about the paper two section B questions.